some three years. Every day of my life for three years, I looked over my whole life and I evaluated and I said, okay, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? And I made myself a promise that I would never, never be put in a position or put myself in a position to have to harm another person in any way. In 76, I was allowed to go out in population and it was like stepping out. You know, I never knew what grass felt like until you're in solitary confinement for that long. And when I say solitary confinement, I'm not talking about just locked up, I'm talking about solitary confinement. Back then, they had solitary confinement. I didn't see anybody. What was it like? What was the size of the cell? Oh, uh, it was about four by eight. Um, but you wasn't allowed to be around any other inmate. The only thing you seen was an officer. You saw no one for three years? Yeah, I mean, you see them from a distance, but you didn't have any contact with them. Um, Actually, it was from January of uh, 74 until June 76. But when I first, when they first let me out in population, I was able to, to walk on the grass on the ball field for the first time in three years. And I never, I never realized how soft grass was. At that point in time in the prison system, it was really growing. The population was getting really overcrowded. And to say it was dangerous would be an understatement. Now, I didn't know anybody in prison because I'd, well, I've never been in prison, you know. I'd, How old were you? 23. Uh, I'd been picked up on several drunk driving charges, but I've never been in any kind of trouble. No kind of trouble? No, no. juvenile record? No juvenile record. I've been blessed all along all these years. I, I tell you, I had a counselor who's now a warden <coughs> call me to his office, looked at my record, and he said, you don't have an education. I said, no. So he got me in school. And he seen that I had an alcohol problem and drug problem, and he got me an AA. And he seen that I had a real low self-esteem, and he got me into a program called Seven Steps. Now, he not only got me in those programs, every week I get called to his office and I had to give him a progress report on where I was at and how I felt and all this other stuff. Now, that don't sound like much to a lot of people, but he's the only person that ever took an interest in me in my life. So he helped change me and turn, turn me around. He helped me see the need of change. And I don't know when it happened. I, you know, over the years, I just, I come out of the self mode and I went into a mode of trying to help people. Jack Morgan, I, he's a warden, I think I said earlier, he's a warden now, but he'll never know how much I respect him and how much I care for him. Because he literally changed my life. Uh, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. But while I was locked up, I promised my mother, and she's dead and gone now, but I promised my mother that I'd get an education. I never realized how much I liked to learn. Um, my wife used to call me a professional student a few years, several years ago, matter of fact. But uh, even today, I'll take a challenge. I'll take on something new so I can learn it. Just because I can learn it. I, I, I just can't seem to get enough learning for some reason. I don't know why. I love to learn. Unless you've experienced it, it's hard to put into words. But when you see, like this institution, we've got a lot of mental health people here. When you see one of those people accomplish something they didn't think they could accomplish, and a joy in their face, 
There's nothing like it. That's the most gratifying thing that you can ever do. I think when a person gets out of self, then they're able to move along in life. And me, it, it's not about me. Life isn't about me anymore. I mean, it's just, it's about, and I don't, I guess most people might question this, or maybe they don't, I don't know. What's my purpose? What's my purpose? And I look at that, and what is my purpose? And I've pondered that, and I've pondered that, and I've thought about it, and I've thought about it. But the greatest joy I get out of life is helping someone. I had a guy get killed sitting right beside me. He got stuck 27 times. We're sitting there eating lunch. They had no idea what was coming until he got there. I was standing within 10 foot of a guy that uh, got his brains blowed out with a pistol inside the prison walls. I've been in the dining room and something warm hits you in the back of the neck and you reach up there and you get a handful of blood. Um, you, you see this stuff. And it changes you. It shows you what rage can do for nothing. But it's senseless. It's changed me. It, uh, this job has changed me. Let me put it this way. Working for the chaplain's department has changed me a great deal. A lot more than I ever thought it would change me. Uh, when you see guys that you knew in their prime that were big, burly, mean, tough guys. And when you see them on their arms, not big than them, not much bigger than that microphone, um, and helpless, absolutely helpless. If that don't change you, there ain't nothing gonna change you. I used to tell some of the young guys, there's three ways you can come to prison. You can come in as a Billy Bad Butt, with your chest poked out, somebody's gonna poke with holes in it. You come in scared to death, somebody's gonna take advantage of you. You've got to hit that happy medium in between the two. And that means is you mind your own business, but you don't let nobody get in your business. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. My granddaddy told me one time that's all I had. Yeah. And it's all you got in this world. If your word's not any good, you're not any good. And once I got sober and clean, I see the importance of it. I think as human beings, we've got to have a goal set in our life, and I think we've got to have a purpose. I think our biggest problem in achieving a purpose is finding out what that purpose is. And I think that's one of the biggest problems today is people have no idea what the purpose is. And I still don't know mine. But you're walking every day toward that? I'm trying to learn it every day. I'm trying to learn it. Uh, one of these days, maybe I'll, 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 I'll be able to sit down and say, that's it. I know exactly what it is now. It's to love and be loved. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, that's, yeah. Don't mind, I might want to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> to love and be loved.